Hello, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Running and here are the shoes that I think are best suited to taking you from road running to trail running. So what you're looking for here is a nice balance of cushioning and trail feel. You want enough cushioning and protection from the hard road surface, but not so much that you can't feel any of the lumps and bumps of the trail beneath your feet. You want to feel a little bit to allow your foot to respond quickly and efficiently to the trail. You'll also want more grip than a road running shoe, but not so much that when you run on the roads, it squashes around underfoot, causing instability and a loss of energy. And finally, most road running shoes have quite a high heel stack, like possibly around 10 to 12 millimeters. This is known as the drop, which is the height difference between the heel and the toe of the shoe. So a lot of trail running shoes have a lower drop to create more of a natural running position. However, if you lower the angle of your heel really quickly, you risk strain and injury to your Achilles tendon and your calf muscles. So see this film here for more information on drop and why it's so important. So for this review, I've chosen higher drop road to trail running shoes that have more like six to eight millimeter drop rather than four to five millimeters, which is also a popular level for lower drop trail running shoes. So here are my top five road to trail running shoes to help you pick the perfect pair. And if you fancy buying any of these, then just use the affiliate links in my film description below and please click like and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. Uh, so you don't miss out on any more gear reviews from Wild Ginger Running. First of all, the Innovate Park Claw G280. So the full retail price is quite high at £160 and this pair of UK size 6.5s weighs a nice light 510 grams. The sizing is spot on, it's very comfy, it's a snug hug of a fit straight from the box. Um, it's quite a regular fit, the Park Claw G280s will fit a lot of runners feet. The heel is nicely cupped, the toe box is a little roomy but not especially wide, not like the wide fit brands Topo and Ultra. Personally I still find that when my feet swell after a long time running my little toe will feel a little bit squished in these I would really love it if Innovate made a really wide version of this shoe so the drop is eight millimeters and the cushioning is Innovate's G Fly foam which provides a nice level of bounce I found without stopping your feet feeling and responding quickly to the terrain underfoot the new boomerang footbed as well is awesome it's got these little TPU beads inside that compress and spring back for Innovate say 40% more energy return than standard foot pads. I don't have a lab, so I can't verify that figure, but I do know that it does help the park claws feel really bouncy. The ride feels comfy, responsive, and bouncy, but not overly propulsive. This shoe doesn't get in the way of your nat foot's natural movement. It just pads and protects it nicely. So I feel like Innovate have achieved a really nice balance of protective padding and trail feel with this shoe. The grip contains Innovate's unique special ingredient, graphene, which has 50% more durability and traction from these four millimeter deep lugs. Graphene is one of the best grips on wet rock that I've tried. I was sent these first of all the shoes in the test, so I've worn them much more than any of the others. The wear is good so far, but ask me in a year's time. The only strange thing was the lacing, really. They came laced the other way to how I would usually lace a shoe. It makes them harder to pull tight, but it does lock them in place. I have just relaced one of them the other way to test out, and I prefer them the traditional way. So the verdict, the Innovate Park Claw G280s will suit most runners who aren't wanting a super wide toe box, looking for a very durable grip that performs well over a huge variety of terrain, both roads and trails. Next up, it's the Brooks Cascadia 16, the 16th incarnation of this classic and hugely popular trail running shoe. I found reading the reviews online on the Brooks website super interesting because some people flat out hate this new version, whereas other, other people think it's the best thing since dehydrated water. Unfortunately, I don't have the 15, so I can't offer you a comparison, but 120 pounds, they're great value, while at 560 grams, they're slightly heavier than average for this UK size 6.5. The sizing is slightly on the larger size. If I was in a shop, I'd be keen to try a half size smaller just to check. But having said that, these feel really comfy on and the fit is lovely and roomy up front with a lot of room for the toes to display. They just seem a teeny bit long. The drop is eight millimeters so these are good for runners coming from a more traditional road shoe and the cushioning is Brooks new DNA Loft V2 midsole which they say is five percent softer and 20 percent lighter than the Cascadia 15 and it does feel nice and light on your foot. 
The rebound isn't super pingy, leading to a more muted ride, which lets your foot mold around the lumpy ground, but with a nice comfy pad under your foot to cushion it from all the impact. This is helped as well by the ballistic rock shield, a flexible plate that provides protection from the rocks on the trail. It's comfy yet protective. It's a good combination, especially for long distances, I found. And the trail tack rubber grip with four millimeter deep lugs is good on both road and trails. There is Velcro at the heel here for a debris gaiter and a handy bit of elastic halfway down to pop your laces inside to stop them snagging from passing brambles, which is useful. Verdict. So the Brooks Cascadia 16 is a super comfy, straightforward padded trail shoe for long distance runners who want a durable, rugged protection and cushioning, but still want to feel and respond to the trail underfoot. Shoe number three, the La Sportiva Caracals are £130 and they weigh 530 grams for a pair of UK size 6.5. The sizing is spot on, the fit is wonderfully snug around the midfoot and the heel. You really feel like the foot is securely in place with this wide beefy tongue. While the toe box is really nice and roomy, it's actually one of the widest in this test without being a topo on ultra. So for me there's a slight issue with the Ortholite sole. It rubs my arch after about an hour or so is running, but a quick swap to a different insole solves that problem really quickly. I often find that with Ortholite insoles for some reason, despite the fact that they're designed for runners. Unfortunately less solvable is the lace, um, the front of the lacing here, where it folds downwards and jabs my left foot after I've tightened it. This is a real shame because otherwise I'd be running miles and miles in this, these super comfy trail shoes. My right foot is fine as it's slightly smaller. <laughs> the drop is seven millimeters, which is rare. The majority of trail running shoes seem to be eight or four millimeters, but you probably won't notice much of a difference from the eight millimeters in all honesty. So it is still good for folks coming from traditional heel stacked running trainers. The cushioning is Memlex Eva with shock absorbing injection and this gives a stable padded ride I found um, yet still responsive with enough protection for rockier parts of the trail. It's a good balance of support cushioning and trail feel. Grip wise the Frixion Blue works really well with four millimeter deep lugs and it seems durable too as does the whole shoe really. The verdict, this shoe feels so comfy in all areas, just apart from this tiny little bit here that digs in. Maybe I can put some K-tape across my foot or encourage the fold to go upwards rather than down. I'm really jealous if this foot fits your shoe perfectly, which it will for a lot of you, as this is an otherwise comfy, rugged road to trail running shoe for wide toed runners. I really like it. Wow, you're three shoes in. Thank you for watching. I hope this review is helping you out. And if you're feeling really generous, consider buying me a virtual pint using my new super thanks button below. You could also become a member on YouTube or support me on Patreon here. No worries if not though, I just thought I would mention it. Now, this is an interesting shoe from Arcteryx. The Norvan LD3 is high in price, £150 and low in weight at £492 for this pair of UK size 6.5, which is further astonishing because they come up quite roomy volume wise. The toe box is quite wide, good for people who like a bit of toe splay. They feel big when on, but they come up quite high around the ankle if you have a low volume foot. I didn't find this uncomfortable, but just different to most of the others in the test. I feel like I'm lower down in the shoe. It would be interesting to try a half size smaller just to see how they compare. These would fit a high volume foot quite well. The drop is six millimeters so it's a nice halfway house between the more heel stacked eight millimeter traveling shoes that we've seen in this test so it will suit runners whose feet can cope with a little bit of a lower drop. The infused cushioning is also a nice balance of bounce without so much padding that or stiffness that the ride doesn't feel responsive. You, your foot can feel the trail beneath you but there's still enough protection there. I liked this. Um, this is thanks in part to the Vibram light base sole. It's 50% thinner and 30% lighter version of their usual mega grip outsole with four millimeter lugs. I've always found Vibram to provide great traction on wet and dry roads and trails, so that's great. There is a lace housing area here on the tongue, which would be handy to stop the laces flapping about and catching on foliage, but it's quite hard to use because once you've laced up the shoes, it covers it over, so it's difficult to get them inside. The housing itself is elastic, but not the edge bit. So if they made that elastic to the edge, I think that would work better. Verdict. So all in all, the Arcteryx Norvan LD3s are great for road to trail runners with high volume feet wanting a roomy toe box and to feel the ground beneath their feet, but with still enough cushioning and protection and bounce. The Merrill Agility Peak 4s are very reasonable at £120. They're slightly on the heavier side though, at 555 grams for a pair of UK size 6.5s. But they do come up a half size bigger, so that would make them more average in weight. So despite the large size, the fit feels comfy with the laces pulled well in and the toe box is 
quite roomy too. The drop is six millimeters, which is a good transition down from the eight millimeter shoes that we have in this test and useful if you're looking to transition gradually down to the lower drop shoes, say the popular four millimeter drop options. So the Agility Peaks are nice and bouncy with a good energy return thanks to the Float Pro Foam midsole cushioning. Your feet are protected with a rock plate and the ride is padded and bouncy, but with a good level of feel for the ground underfoot. It's another one that has got the a nice balance with this. The grip is our old friend, the Vibram Mega Grip. It does sound a little bit like a dinosaur, doesn't it? Like, or a transformer. The Vibram Megatron strikes again with four millimeter lug. Anyway, it's one of the best for traction and durability on wet and dry roads and trails, so it's unlikely to go extinct anytime soon. There is a D-ring at the front here for a gaiter on the lace, um, but apart from that, uh, my verdict is that the Agility Peak 4s are a simple, cushioned and robust pair of trail running shoes that will suit a great many runners on all terrain including both roads and trails so those are my top five road to trail running shoes with a good balance of cushioning versus ground feel not too low drop and enough grip to transition to off-road so i hope this review was helpful for you let me know in the comments below if i missed out your favorite pair of road to trail running shoes and click here for more gear reviews from wild ginger running remember to like and subscribe to support the channel hit the super thanks button buy my book here or support me on Patreon here for perks like my monthly competition to win over £400 worth of trail running gear. It's true. All these things plus links to all the shoes are also in the film description below. So thanks for watching. Let me know which pair you eventually bought and I hope they last you many miles of road to trail running. See you on the trails.